fellow members and guests. A few weeks ago, our meeting focused heavily on the identification and pursuit of one's passions and overcoming the obstacles that present themselves along the way. Well, what do you do when your passion is gardening, but you don't have a yard? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let that stop me. Like Miguel de Cervantes' famous protagonist, Don Quixote, self-appointed knight, despite living in a world uh, with that lacked chivalric values. So I set out to become a gardener in the face of a lack of an essential element, ground. <laughs> <laughs> Thus began my adventures in patio, or rather, ground floor level balcony gardening, with its many unique challenges. From the dirt, to cats, to an inconvenient apartment building maintenance schedule. Why did I decide to pursue uh, gardening despite my less than optimal horticultural situation? <laughs> Don Quixote was driven by his pursuit of chivalric honor. I set about to achieve gardening somewhat more modest, yet nonetheless rewarding benefits. I've even got my own Sancho Panza, <laughs> <laughs> my guinea pig Blaze. She upholds the comparison quite well. Sancho Panza was a simple, robust, and world-wearied man, convinced to join Don Quixote on his harebrained adventures. Not for the adventures themselves, but for the potential gain. Potential gains which were very unlikely to be materialized. <laughs> Blaze is also a well-rounded <laughs> individual, and she's along for the ride, in particular for the potential vegetables, though those aren't always likely to be a success. Don Quixote was seeking adventures, whereas gardening allows me to relax and meditate. It's a practice in patience and an exercise in nurturing and giving up control. It's a small daily exercise in overcoming the frustration of perfectionism and learning how to persevere through a series of setbacks and fears. And it's something I wish to carry into the other areas of my life. When done successfully, gardening yields a bounty. Fruits, herbs, vegetables, flowers, and in my case, mostly wildflowers. <coughs> Don Quixote was an avid reader, and he was motivated by the chivalric novels in his library collection. I have been motivated by literature as well, reading gardening magazines and the beautiful gardens that they feature. I'm sure you fellow green thumbs out there can feel the enthusiasm and desire to go about and achieve a similar level of beauty <laughs> and perfection. Like Don Quixote, who was a retired country gentleman, I, a novice gardener, have come across some unexpected obstacles and <coughs> comical situations along the way. Both Don Quixote and I have to make do with what we have available, and in that case, imagination is key. Not only does Don Quixote choose Dulcinea, a lowly chambermaid as his lady-in-waiting, and Rosinante, an emaciated farm horse as his steed, but also in the lack of the appropriate night gear, he chooses a bronze bowl as a helmet. I have to seek out container garden supplies, special small gardening tools, and I have to experiment with seeds to see which ones will grow in a shallow pot in the shade. <laughs> I transplant the successful ones. <laughs> in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, what is a weed? A weed is a plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered. <laughs> these virtues of the weed, and a proper place for them in my patio garden. They're the most likely to flourish, and I've gained a whole new perspective on, and fondness for, weeds. Neighbors, onlookers, and other unlikely characters play along with and involve themselves in our pursuits. Don Quixote, in spite of his lofty and noble goals, was viewed as a lunatic for his delusions of grandeur. He saw others' perceptions of him as deluded in and of themselves. Though not attempting anything particularly noble, I have sometimes felt, unlike Don Quixote though, particularly perceptible to the, the viewpoints of others. I'm determined to keep on regardless. In one episode, Don Quixote pursues the daughter of an innkeeper named Mari Tornes, whom he believes to be a princess, much to her chagrin. <laughs> she quite willingly plays along with him and plays along with his antics, flattered and amused. My neighbors often see me in action. My balcony faces the parking lot, and it's in full view of the entry of my building. There I am, my knees on the floor, 
pots around me with my bag of potting soil and seeds, dirt on my hands and arms, determined to make a go of the whole unusual venture. The neighbor above me has been quite supportive, whether out of genuine interest or mere curiosity. <laughs> In my case, it was two cats who involved themselves with my gardening venture. The first cat came inside when I was in the process of washing off the dirt and lead from the transplantation process. The second cat appeared when I got a phone call in the middle of gardening. On the way back out, I found himself rubbing himself against my curtains, the only boundary between the cat and the rest of my apartment. Both cats, I have to say, were quite well-mannered and easily coaxed out of my apartment. Don Quixote and I both must confront unforeseen setbacks and challenges, environmental and societal. Don Quixote's most common battle was the battle against those who saw his adventures as uh, misadventures. Environmentally speaking, the classic story of the failed attack against the giants, which were actually large windmills, comes to mind. The inconvenient exterior apartment building maintenance comes into play when they power wash the outsides of the buildings. I have to pick up my garden, bring it inside, hope nothing gets dirty, wait until they power wash the building, and bring them back outside and hope they survive the experience. <laughs> Although I do have to say, having it on a, a ground floor level balcony, there's a roof, and it did protect them from the hailstorm we had a few months back. Toward the end of his journey, Don Quixote was dragged back by his local priest and started to see his adventures the way other people saw his adventures as delusions and started to fall back into uh, a relaxed, I guess, uh, mode of defeat. My current situation today does nothing spectacular, but it's promising, despite a number of failures of planting experiments. My tomatoes, peppers, four pots, and wildflowers are leaving the path. I'll conclude by, with a quote by Alfred Austin, who says, show me your garden and I shall tell you what you are. Austin surely meant his quote to be philosophically profound, whereas in my case, or at least I'm hoping, it's nothing short of humorous and ironic. <laughs>